I thought I'd take a minute to do a quick instructional video. It won't take long at all. I'm getting ready to uh, uh, do a multicolor epoxy inlay. And one of the things that we need to do to make sure that we always get back to the same spot is use a fence system both on the left side and the bottom side that we can always ensure our X, Y, zero is in the same spot each time we lay the board down. And I had removed my uh, fence on my X direction due to uh, doing some tiling work and some other work where the fence was in the way. So what I thought I would do is take a second and show just a quick tip on squaring away uh, the X fence. I had already previously squared the Y aluminum fence and fastened it down by carving straight into my MDF and having an edge to go against. So I knew that was nice and square and I, I leave that in place because in tiling I can use that as, as a reference edge. But when I'm tiling I need to remove my X fence and so then I needed to put it back on and make sure everything was square. So this little video will discuss the process I did for that and even a little oops at the end. To introduce the setup of this uh, segment of the video, let me explain the background first. So before I started filming, I actually used a speed square, a large square, to lay against the Y fence and then try to get a 90 as close as possible with the X fence. But the problem is when you're doing that, as you uh, put the screws in, sink the screws and everything else, there can be movement in the wood and you can get off either a little bit or more than you uh, expect. So in the setup here, I've actually screwed down the X fence. I thought it was square, but when I laid a square up against it, I noticed that uh, it had moved and I was going to need to adjust it. And so that's what this is filming is me going about making sure that it is square by using the CNC as the method for squaring that X fence against the Y. That's what you're seeing. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and run a small edge. I used a square on it, but sometimes that won't be square enough. So at this time, I'm lining up. What you're seeing me do is line up to be able to square this up. So I'll come over this way and manually bring this down to the Z zero which is right on the top of my spoiler board okay just barely took a bite there so now that's zero and then I'm going to come over to where the edge of this bit is just barely touching the edge here So it's just barely touching and I want to see how that's going to look up and down so I will come this way and then I'm going to come across and you can see I'm touching so now I know that I'm touching so I'll take the slightest amount off if I start trimming that. I'll manually start the machine Bring it up to speed and I'll run the X plus button. I'm going to hit X plus as I go all the way across. Take the fast speed and I'll stop when I get past the edge here. So you can see it's not touching out there. You can see there's a, there's a gap there. So now I need to come back in, come back down. When I just take, I'm just kicking right there. So now I'll come across. And I cut into my track a little bit there on the aluminum. So even though I had originally thought I was square, as you can see, I wasn't. And now I am. Well, I hope some of you find this video helpful. 
I know that when I was first starting out and uh, I was trying to figure out how to do things on my CNC or ways to do things efficiently or effective, I would uh, scour YouTube and look for various tips and tricks. And some people, I think, assume that something is too basic to put on there. But uh, I decided that when I can think about it, I'll put these little tips and tricks on there so that others might learn from my mistakes or how to make things. The focus of this video was, let's summarize, was I was installing an X fence because I needed to have a consistent X, Y, zero point for a multicolor pour epoxy project. And I need to put it back in the same exact spot because I remove it from the bed and put it back on. So that was the focus. As an extra added benefit, I uh, demonstrated what not to do when you're actually using a manual controller or even uh, an automatic controller, but mostly a manual controller for, for movement of your spindle. You never know when you're going to get a little heavy handed. And so when I started my second pass and I started coming across, there was actually a thought in my head that I shouldn't be doing this, but I figured oh, I control it good enough. And sure enough, I didn't. I, uh, when I got to that last little jog, I got a little heavy on the controller. And so it came across and went into my aluminum fence. My aluminum fence will be fine. It's uh, got a little damage, but a little file took care of being able to use the track. But the bit I actually ruined, I tried to use it in a follow-up project and uh, it just was mostly burning. It was cutting, but it was burning. So I could have avoided that if I had actually started on the left side. So if I figured out how much I needed to trim off, got that all figured out, and then gone back and started on the left side of the X fence like I did on pass one, then if I overshot, I wouldn't have ran into that uh, aluminum fence. And I knew that in the back of my head, but I was trying to make this video and figure now I can control it and uh, I was wrong. So uh, always be thinking, this is a, a, a tip I think, always be thinking about what's the worst that can happen and what bad can happen. Uh, and is there a different way to approach it if something bad can happen? I did know that I could run into that aluminum fence and it did. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Also uh, share it and uh, if you have comments, feel free to do that. Uh, I appreciate all insights and uh, thank you very much. And if you like what I'm giving you, subscribe to the channel. Thank you.